Daily Trust News Center. This is the News Hour. On News Hour tonight, PDP Labour Party rejects ongoing presidential election result coalition, accuse INEC of compromise. APC accuses former President Obasanjo of partisanship and insensitivity. Supreme Council of Islamic Affairs cautions political actors against reckless statement, asks INEC not to be distracted. And on the foreign scene, UN suspends flights in eastern Congo after missions helicopter attack. Hello and welcome to News on Trust TV. I'm Darshan Hussaina Usman. Now the news in detail. People's Democratic Party and Labour Party have rejected the presidential election coalition process by the Independent National Electoral Commission ongoing at the International Conference Centre Abuja, accusing the election management body of compromise and colluding with the ruling party. Chairman of the two parties, Iota Ayu and Julius Abure, addressed a joint press conference on Tuesday. Lucas is supposed to be an independent commission but they have demonstrated unbelievable uh, bias favoring one political party, the party in government. And therefore, we think it has lost its credibility or its independence. And particularly by violating the very electoral act which was passed by Nigeria's National Assembly signed into law, and of which uh, the guidelines that INEC provided all the political parties derived from that electoral, in other ways, they have quasi-legal status. For INEC to violate that, it means INEC is degenerating into an illegal body, because it is not supposed to violate its own guidelines and to violate the electoral act. In all my interviews before today, I've always maintained that I trust the integrity of the INEC chairman. But that he has betrayed totally by his conduct, by his behavior and conduct of this election. And therefore, confidence and trust is end. I think he has destroyed that confidence. And that's why we are asking for his removal. We no longer believe that he has that integrity to be able to conduct free, fair and credible elections. And I need to put it here very clearly that they may have given excuses that they had technical hitches. That server was deliberately pulled down by IMEC in order to allow the APC to manipulate results and compromise the process. And therefore, it touches on the personality and integrity of IMEC. And that's why we have lost confidence in its continued sharing of these processes that will give us in New Nigeria. The vice presidential candidates of the People's Democratic Party and Labour Party, Ifan Yokoa and Deti Baba Ahmed on Tuesday, insist that the results collated by the Independent National Electoral Commission without first being transmitted electronically is illegal as it breaches the provision of the Electoral Act. At a joint conference in Abuja, the two criticised the chairman of the commission Professor Mohamed Yakubu for his insistence on completing the coalition process before a review of contested results. Okowa, who read a prepared text on behalf of the two, said that the argument of waiting until the coalition process is complete is idle and contrary to the law. He pointed out that by law, any result announced by INEC is ultra-virus, illegal, and of no consequence unless they are already transmitted directly from the polling units. Meanwhile, the Independent National Electoral Commission has described the call by the Labour Party and the People's Democratic Party on Chairman Professor Mahmoud Yakubu to resign as misplaced, saying the allegation that the INEC chairman allocated scores to parties is unfounded and irresponsible. Chief Press Secretary to INEC, Chairman Roti Mioyekami, in a statement, said contrary to the insinuation by both parties, results emanating from the state points to a free, fair and credible process. Oyekami said aggrieved parties are free to approach the courts to ventilate their concerns and wait for the matter to be resolved, adding that making inciting comments capable of causing violence or unrest is unacceptable. 
The statement said it is only fair for aggrieved parties to allow the conclusion of the process and approach the courts with their evidence to pursue their cases. New Nigeria People's Party has accused the Independent National Electoral Commission of colluding with the ruling All Progressives Congress to manipulate the 2023 general elections. Addressing the media at the Transcorp Hilton Abuja, the national chairman of the NNPP, Professor Rufai Ahmed Al Ali, called for cancellation of the elections, saying that INEC had taken Nigeria back to pre-2015 era. He said the 2023 general elections were characterized by ballot snatching, vote buying, security agents actively supporting the ruling party, and violence. He insisted the INEX refusal to technology to transmit the results from polling units to the SAVA has compromised the integrity of the elections and that it's evidence that it colluded with the ruling party to shortchange Nigerians. APC Presidential Campaign Council says statements credited to former President Obasanjo is self-serving and capable of truncating Nigeria's hard-earned democracy. Obasanjo had on Monday called for cancellation of election in areas violence erupted, prompting the Campaign Council to react. Kabiru Lawang attends the press conference which the Council addressed in Abuja. Minister of State, Labor and Employment, Festus Kayamu, flanked by other members of the Media and Publicity Directorate of the Campaign Council, were quick to dismiss the suggestion of former President on election cancellation. You cannot complain about a process, about election results that have not been released, have not been, have not been announced. So they want the national chairman to inquire into results that he has not received and declared. And that is not the provisions, that, does, that is completely at variance with the Electoral Act. Special Advisor, Media Communications and Public Affairs to the Council, Delia Alake, says no true Democrat will seek an abortion of the process. Just the election are not going his ways. Elections are meant to test a candidate's acceptance of popularity. In a national election, you must seek acceptance nationally. Ethnic champions cannot go far as democracy is a game of numbers. Wherever a candidate has a critical number, numbers, he wins. Wherever he's deficient, he loses. We have seen all these scenarios at play in the last weekend's election. We call on INEC to speed up the announcement of the results to quickly diffuse the current atmosphere of anxiety in the country. We call on Nigerians and our supporters across the country to be peaceful, exercise more patience, and not be provoked by the antics of the agents of darkness lurking around. Finally, we call on Atiku Abubakar and Peter Obi to emulate former President Jonathan, good luck, good luck Jonathan, by conceding defeat honorably. Former Minister of Aviation Femi Fani Kayode added that the statement by the former president is causing confusion in the democratic process. Supporting a democratic process, removing an INEC chairman because you're not winning, and then President Obasanjo, and it hurts me to have to say this, will come and add his voice to the whole idea of aborting a democratic process. These are not Democrats, these are tyrants. Other members of the PCC also added that INEC should not be distracted from completing the process and allow forces to truncate democracy. But I want to say that we understand that we're living in a democracy and, you know, election is a game of numbers and we have gone through a process. I don't think Nigerians have ever gone through a freer and fairer Very process. Enough. The president went out of his way to put in policies that even were affecting us negatively, but to make sure that Nigerians have the ability to go and exercise their constitutional duty freely. And this is what has happened. INEC, in the meantime, has continued collation of presidential election results in Abuja. Kabir Lowell, Trust TV News. Former President Goodluck Jonathan and ex ghanaian President John Mahama have called on the Independent National Electoral Commission to comply with the provisions of the Electoral Act 2022 on the coalition of results for the presidential and national assembly elections held on February 25, 2023. 
the two former leaders and other members of West African Elders Forum election mission to Nigeria made this known in a statement on Tuesday in Abuja. They appealed for calm in the country while calling on INEC to address the concerns and procedural questions raised so far by different stakeholders. As part of moves to ensure post-election peace, the elders met with presidential candidates including Bola Tinubu of APC, Peter Obi of Labour Party, Rabi Okonkwaso of New Nigeria People's Party and Atikwa Abubakar of uh, People's Democratic Party. Away from that story, Minister of Information Lai Mohammed has urged former President Olusegun Obasanjo not to truncate the 2023 general elections. Mohammed was reacting to a letter written by the former president calling for cancellation of election in areas where violence erupted. He described the call as inciting, self-serving and provocative. The minister said what Obasanjo framed as an appeal for caution and ratification is nothing but a calculated attempt to undermine the electoral process and a willful incitement of violence. In a statement signed by Shegun Adeyemi, special assistant to the minister on media, the minister expressed shock and disbelief that a former president could throw around unverified claims and amplify wild allegations picked up from the street against the electoral process. The Nigerian Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs cautions political leaders and actors against making provocative and unguarded statements which could drag the country into unnecessary conflicts and anarchy. In a statement signed by Professor Salah Sushehu, Deputy Secretary General and Zubair Ugu, Director Administration, the council notes that reckless statements from inconsequential individuals can be easily ignored, but statements from respected political and religious leaders is not. NSCIA said it is important that patriotic and well-meaning Nigerian leaders should support unrelenting adherence to process and procedure in the ongoing electoral process. The statement adds that any inclination to unprocedural decisions or actions at this critical time is a direct call for anarchy, which will not yield any positive outcome to the nation. The NSCIA counsels the Independence National Electoral Commission to remain undistracted and committed to its duty until it discharges it to its logical conclusion. Oni of Ife, Adeaye Eniton Ogunusi, has appealed to all stakeholders in the ongoing presidential election, particularly politicians and INEC, to be mature in their conduct in order for peace to reign. In a press statement issued at the Ile Odua Palace, Ile Ife, on Tuesday, the Oni said, who, who, the Oni, who is the chairman or the co-chairman of the National Council of Traditional Rulers of Nigeria, explained that Nigerians, particularly the low-income earners, have been waiting patiently for the electionarian period to be over for them to resume normal activities. In the same vein, the Oni urges Nigerians to remain patient and understanding of the fact that the country is far bigger than all entities and personalities. The People's Democratic Party wins presidential election in Kaduna State with a margin of 155,068 votes. The party polled 544,360 votes ahead of APC with 399,293 votes, winning just two local government areas out of the 23 local government areas in the state. The report. The returning officer for Kaduna State, Professor Muhammad Zayan Umar announced the results. ABC 2,815. LP 294,494. NNPP 92,000. 969 PDP 554,360-554-360 Agent of the political parties commended INEC for the successful conduct of the election in the state. Uh, as far as Kaduna State is concerned, 
I must commend the uh, electoral body here in Kaduna, led by the acting uh, resident electoral commissioner. You know, they, are, they, they know any election that there are no one or two hitches or challenges. But I can say that overall, we give any kudos for what it has done in Kaduna State. From uh, the process, it, it looks okay, even though they disappointed, of, they disappointed us for not offloading it uh, at the website, but even the manual, we are, we are okay with it. We are going to start our preparation for the governorship election. Uh, we have noticed some lapses which we are going to correct. Uh, going by the minimum number of uh, cancellation, minimum number of disruption of ballot boxes, minimum number of uh, uh, violence, uh, uh, electoral violence in some places. So we can say the process is fair. And although my party has complained initially, because when you look at the ballot paper, it has the logo of the party, but the name of the party was not written. If you look at PDP, you will see the umbrella, you will see PDP written. When you look at uh, APC, you will see the broom, you will see APC written. NNPP is only the picture of the basket with fruits without the letters NNPP. So While commending citizens in the state for peaceful conduct during the election, Kaduna State Commissioner of Police, Sande Babaji, said the police will do more to ensure maximum security in the forthcoming governorship election. The security performance during the 2023 presidential and national assembly election can be adjudged to be satisfactorily. The security agencies have uh, done their best and the cooperation given by the good people of Kaduna State is also commendable. The INEC staff have also done their best and that is why we are witnessing this coalition which was also successful. Well, the same cooperation we have given the security agencies and the INEC staff, I am calling on the good people of Kaduna State to still continue and even take it to a higher level of cooperating so that we have a successful governorship and state assembly elections. Bella Musa, Trust TV News Kaduna. Candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, has won the highest votes in the presidential election conducted in Plateau State. The state coalition officer for the presidential election, Professor Shehu Abdurrahman of the Federal University Lafia, announced the results. The candidates of the APC came second, while that of the PDP came third. Ado Musa completes the story. Labour Party candidate Obi won in 11 out of the 17 local government areas of the state. APC candidate Bola Tinibu scored 307, 195,000 to come second and PDP candidate Atiku Abubakar pulled 243, 808,000. ADC 1728-1728 ADP 1922 1922 APC 3071.95 Some party agents speak on the outcome of the exercise. Well, um, the process has ended. But I truly believe, I sincerely believe that the process was flawed. There, there was a lot of expectation on INEC, and INEC truly did not meet our expectation. We all know that the elections were conducted peacefully on the plateau, even though there were some hitches somewhere. But security personnel were able to curtail them and all other places the election was held and results were announced without any problem well um for a fact it is um an experience that is worth trying um with the introduction of the beavers um, we have a new uh, innovation into our political um, electioneering and so we are hoping that in um, this beaver machine um, will actually give the desired um, result with which it has actually been introduced. Party agents present were called to sign the final copy of the result, 
which will be taken to the National Coalition Center in Abuja. Ado Musa, Trust TV News, Jos. The Independence National Electoral Commission has declared National Assembly elections in Sokoto State inconclusive because of cancellation on account of violence and overvoting, among other irregularities. PDP candidate for Sokoto South, Governor Amino Wazidi Tambuel, secures 87,850 votes, followed by APC candidate Ibrahim Nambaba with 79,991 before the election was declared inconclusive. The returning officer, Professor Shehu Usman Gulumbe, explained that the election was declared inconclusive because of overvoting and disruption of election processes in all the seven local government across the senatorial districts. In Sokoto North, senatorial district, APC candidate Senator Aliyu Magatagada Wamako polled 114,866 votes against the 103,134 votes scored by PDP candidate and incumbent deputy governor of the state, Manir Engia. The returning officer, Professor Ibrahim Magawata, said results from some polling units with 121,010 registered voters were cancelled. Therefore, the election was inconclusive. Similarly, no winner was declared for Sokoto East senatorial election as results from 67,602 polling units were cancelled over violence, among others. The Independent National Electoral Commission has announced um, Adamu Alero of the People's Democratic Party as winner of Kebi Central Senatorial District election held on February 25. INEC returning officer Abbas Yusuf Bazata announced the result on Tuesday in Burning Kebi. Bazata said the, that Alero scored 126,588 votes to defeat Bagudu the incumbent governor of Kebi and candidate of the All Progressives Congress who polled 92,389 votes. In Kaduna, the People's Democratic Party senatorial candidate Lowell Adamu Usman, popularly known as Mr. La, won the Kaduna Central senatorial seat in the state after returning officer of Kaduna North Haruna Aminu declared him winner with 225,066 votes ahead of the APC candidate Abdullahi Muhammad Sani Datijo, who polled 182,035 votes. Meanwhile, National Assembly election at Zamfara Central Senatorial District has been declared inconclusive due to cancellation of the exercise at 19 wards and 74 polling units in Guso, Tsafe, Maru and Bungutu local government areas of the state. The coalition officer Ahmed Galadima declared the election inconclusive as the number of cancelled votes is more than the margin that separates the top two candidates. Presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, has scored the highest number of votes in the presidential poll in Abuja. Obi polled 281,667 votes from the six area councils. All Progressives Congress candidate Bola Tinubu trailed with 90,902 votes, while the People's Democratic Party Atiku Abubakar garnered 73,743 votes. A breakdown of the councils showed that the APC won the valid votes declared in Abaji with 10,370 votes, while the PDP received 6,888 and Labour Party got 2,874. In Kujay, Labour Party led the valid votes cast with 14,257 votes, followed by APC with 10,648 and PDP had 10,028. In Kwali, APC led with 11,242 votes, followed by PDP with 9,054 and Labour Party 7,302. In Bwari, Labour Party led the poll with 67,198, APC got 13,156 and PDP received 10,385 votes. In Gogolada, 
Labour Party got the highest vote with 19,694 and APC came second, having received 15,890 votes, while PDP had 10,981 votes. While in the Abuja Municipal Area Council, Labour Party won the 170,392 votes, APC had 29,596 and PDP scored 24,607. Winners have emerged from National Assembly elections held on Saturday. Chiama Kangwafo reports that results have sent a ripple of shock across the country. Take a look. The Labour Party candidate Hireti Kingigbe defeated the incumbent Senator Philip Aduda. The returning officer, Professor Sani Saka, said she pulled 202,175 votes to defeat Aduda, who scored 100,544 votes, while APC's Zakari Angulu got 78,905 votes. One of the other surprises of the 23 election is Enugu State, which until now was regarded as a core PDP state. The avalanche, which swept through the state firmly entrenched Labour Party in the lead as it not only won the presidential election, but also captured all but two of the National Assembly seats contested for. The remaining two seats were won by the People's Democratic Party. Over in the north-central state of Kaduna, the ruling All Progressives Congress Party seemed to have regressed, with the main opposition People's Democratic Party winning the presidential election and also winning 13 of the National Assembly seats, while APC and Labour Party got four and two seats. Down west in the Asian town of Oyo State, the All Progressives Congress not only won the presidential election, but so far has 12 seats in the National Assembly. The party of the governor, PDP, has three seats, while two seats are still pending. It could be said that the major surprise of this year's election is the Labour Party and the inroads it has made in different parts of the country. Chama Kamafo, Trust TV News, Abuja. The majority leader of the House of Representatives, Al Hassan Adodogwa, has been arrested for his alleged role in the killing of several persons and burning of the Secretariat of New Nigerian People's Party during the just concluded polls. The police had confirmed that at least three persons were killed when the campaign secretariat of the NNPP in Tudungwada was set ablaze with two persons burned to death during the crisis that broke out during the collation of the results of the Dogua Tudungwada House of Representatives election, which Dogua was eventually declared to have won. Joining us with an update of that story is Daily Trust Bureau Chief and Colonel Clement Oloyede. Sometimes around 6 o'clock this evening, I got a call from one of my sources in the uh, uh, Mala Aminokano International Airport that uh, a lobby car has been arrested. So quickly, I reached out to my police sources and uh, one of the top uh, police officers in Kano who is involved in the operation confirmed to me that uh, truly the lawmaker that was arrested is the majority leader of the House of Representatives, Alassane Adodogwa, who was just a few days ago declared the winner of the uh, Dogua Tudungwada uh, Federal Constituency, where he's open to represent his people for the system. And the incident that led to his arrest is not unconnected to the violence and uh, arson that happened in the Tudungwada, one of the local governments in his con uh, constituency on Sunday. It was reported and the police confirmed that Sunday that uh, the party secretariat, the campaign secretariat of the New Nigeria People's Party, NNPP, was set ablaze and uh, at least two persons were born to death in the uh, fire. And also, it was also widely reported that uh, uh, Dogua was involved in the uh, unrest that happened in the place. Uh, actually, one of the one of the sources that I spoke to in the police uh, formation in Kano told me that the report they got from the uh, police leadership in that axis, that's the axis of Trudeau, that Dogua was that uh, Dogua allegedly was the one that led the talks that. Uh, unleash mayhem on uh, NNPP supporters and uh, the source said and I quote that uh, he saw Dogua 
taking the side pistol of his orderly and firing some shots at several people. That's what the police source said. So it is on these uh, uh, bases that currently they are holding him. I learned they are holding him in the state CID and uh, they are questioning him as regards to murder and uh, arson. Uh, earlier in the day, Dogua held a press conference with a journalist in Kano and he vehemently denied his, uh, any culpability in the fire incident and alleged killings that happened in, in the constituency. As a matter of fact, he even pushed the blame back on the NNPP saying that they were the ones that self-inflicted the fire on themselves by stockpiling, uh, by allegedly stockpiling explosives in their sectariat, which the, he said they intended to use to burn down the INEC sectariat. And he also denied ever firing any gun. He said he does not have a gun. So at the moment, where we stand is that uh, uh, the majority leader is currently in the custody of the police, where they are grilling him at the state CID as of uh, 8 o'clock when uh, I last uh, spoke with my sources there. And uh, that is the situation of the thing. The NNPP had been alleging since on Sunday, since on Saturday when the election even started, but majorly on Sunday that uh, uh, violence was unleashed on uh, people in the place and that election did not hold so we are expecting that this is one election that the nnpp will surely challenge at the tribunal and whatever means they have so this is the situation of the thing dogua like i said has denied every allegation is in the custody of the police at the moment you're watching news uh, on trust tv coming up after the break we take a look at how Naira's scarcity affects residents days after elections. Stay with us. Now, as part of efforts to support Africa's goal of strengthening... Now, looking at the activity chart, as you can see right here, a total volume of more than 30... Return a Boko Haram crisis that at that time was restricted to Yobe. How secure are they? You can see security men with blood. Leading up to the leading, leading. If you look at England's court, you are looking at EPL, you are looking at their names. You are not looking at Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. You're still watching News on Trust TV. Here's a recap of our top stories. We told you that PDP Labour Party reject ongoing presidential election result coalition accuse INEC of compromise. You also heard that APC accuses former President Obasanjo of being partisan. Moving to more stories, the presidential and national assembly elections held on the 25th of February have come and gone, but people are anxiously waiting for the Independent National Electoral Commission to announce the winner of the election. In Abuja, residents are expressing mixed feelings on the conduct of the election and the results declared so far. Mardia Umar reports. In the build-up to the 2023 presidential polls, it is believed that the election might be the most consequential in Nigeria political history since the return to democracy in 1999. And true to this belief, last weekend, the presidential National Assembly elections were held, bringing expected and unimaginative outcomes. Some residents speak on the conduct of the election. To be honest, I don't think we, we held an election for the first time in Nigeria. The most disappointing part is that the world is looking down on the big brother of Africa and the examples that we are dishing out there is nothing to write home about. Looking at the pockets of events that happened in Lagos, even the FCT that happens to be the capital of Nigeria, it's so disappointing. I don't know what other word I can use to qualify that, but I'm highly disappointed. Like in the polling unit that I voted, everything went well. But I don't know how they compiled the results in the head. So I won't just say what I don't know. From the polling unit I voted, everything was counted perfectly, was recorded. Please, as the election have done passively by the president of Mohammed Buhari, the country, he had tried. 
but elders subordinate to supporting and complete the election so that a country will be peace. There is no say this one I'm not giving to him. I know the INEC have tried, but I wish them to complete very well for the little effort they have done. Nobody have not tried. Concerning the election so far, I can see INEC is working. Because the way at it is as of now, presently, the thing is going smoothly. I can I have not seen anything partiality. So everything they are working fine, everything is normal. Yes. Although their views may be different, but one thing they will agree on is the fact that the Independent National Electric Commission, INEC, should anticipate challenges and prepare for next elections to strengthen democratic ideals. Mardia Umar, Trust TV News, Abuja. The People's Democratic Party in Pitsuno State says arrests of its members during the just-concluded presidential and national assembly elections in the state is a source of worry for the party. Stakeholders of the party raised the concerns during a press conference. Abdullahi Yamadi reports that the briefing also blamed the police for compromise and unethical conduct during the process. His report. Reacting to the outcome of the last Saturday's elections, the PDP members said policemen were used in cutting away their computers and other documents at its situation room, making it impossible to monitor the process. The opposition party also raised alarm over voter inducements, saying the entire process was characterized by sharp practices and misconducts in some voting centers across the state. The party also described the withdrawal of police operatives from its governorship candidate few days to elections as a calculated attempt to expose him to a lot of dangers. The PDP leadership in Kazana, however, called on the police to release its arrested members and all its computers as well as documents in order not to cripple its activities, especially at this crucial period of elections. Two days to election, our situation room, which every party in Nigeria has a situation room, which is normal, it has been the practice, it is just for you to monitor the election and have contact with your agent across, but this inspector, Nasur Lambu, was sent to cut away the computers, arrested 15 of our workers there and detained them in the police headquarters. As I'm talking to you now, the computers are still with the police. So throughout the election, we have not been able to monitor anything. The party said the election was far below the expectations of many Nigerians and expressed disappointment on security agents for allowing talks to disrupt the process in some places. Abdullahi Ismail Amadi, Frost Television News. Kasana. Meanwhile, when contacted on the alleged arrest of PDP supporters, the police spokesman in Katsana, SP Gambo Isa, promised to call back. However, up until the time of filing this report, there was no response from the PPRO, despite several calls and text messages by Trust TV reminding him about the issue. Moving to more stories, the returning officer of Rivers State presidential elections, Teddy Charles Adia, has adjourned coalition of results over alleged threat to his life. Adia, while adjourning the exercise, said he has received several calls and text messages from the public threatening to deal with him for alleged compromise. While vowing not to continue with the coalition until issues on the threat to his life are addressed, called on security agencies to help protect his life. The Commissioner of Police in charge of the presidential elections, uh, CP Adiremi Adewoye, condemned the threat to the life of the returning officer. I'm not involved in counting. I'm not involved in computation. Neither am I involved in validations of votes agreeable to any political party. I carefully consider, therefore, I regret to observe that my life has been threatened because I've elected to serve a dear country and contribute 
my fair quota to the success of the ongoing election, which we all this year wait for and prayed for successes. And by this address, I wish to alert security agencies, indeed the public, on the threat to my life and to request for every necessary protection to enable me to live and discharge my duties and obligations freely. In the meantime, I wish to join the coalitions of this presidential elections for River State to enable the resident electoral commissioner, the REC, or River State, and indeed INEC, to address the foregoing and put my roles as scope in River State to the perspective in the public. The Nigeria police force condemned those threats and those behind it in its entirety, without reservation. It is condemnable that what it has has played out on social media is not translated to real life, and it is affecting the whole of our national interest. It is ridiculous to say the professor kept us waiting for two, three hours, when in actual fact, his own life is under threat. None of your lives are being threatened. And if he did not turn up at all, there is no court we charge him to. Because self-preservation is the first law of nature. If he doesn't feel safe, he won't turn up. And what is anyone going to do about it? And from the brief he gave, he mentioned a particular political party. The presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, has thrashed the governor of Anambra State, Charles Oludo Obiora Okonkwo, Andy Uba and others in Anambra State in the Saturday presidential poll. Declaring the results of the presidential polls, the coalition officer, Nenna Oti, said Peter Obi of Labour Party scored 584,621. The closest rival is the presidential candidate of the PDP, Atiku Abubakar, who scored 9,036 votes, followed by APGA, whose presidential candidate, Peter Umeadi, scored 7,388 votes, while YPP got 1,997. Labour Party won overwhelmingly in Aguata local government area, the hometown of Governor Charles Soludo. The Labour Party scored 37,478 in Aguata local government area, while APGA got 712 out of the total 40,387 votes cast. A mild fire outbreak which affected the multi-billion narrow Lagos State Blue Rail Mass Transit project at Marina on the Lagos Island on Tuesday gutted a section of the rail station. No life was lost and no one was injured. Fire servicemen from both the federal and state fire stations located close by brought the fire under control. It was learned that the fire started from the generator room but was quickly put under control before it could spread to other areas. Lagos State Police Public Relations Officer Benjamin Hundain confirmed the incident. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing. 
You're still watching News R on Trust TV. We'll be back shortly. Documenting the Nigerian story. Welcome back. Still ahead, narrow scarcity continues to be a source of worry for Abuja residents three days after presidential and national assembly elections. Many hope the situation will improve after Saturday's elections. Noel Sampson reports. It is now three days since Nigeria stooped out to elect candidates in presidential and national assembly elections hoping that life will return to normal. Nara scarcity was everybody's nightmare prior to the elections. According to most residents in Abuja, the situation is even getting worse than what it was before the presidential and national assembly elections. My brother, nothing like, nothing like cars for this country. People, they saw very well. Habitizing the rivers, you see me so. Even some passage that will be carried. Some people go to beg or say they want to transfer before we will carry them. There is nothing. Some people, they, now check that they check. Nothing like that. As we express after this election, money go flow out. Upon that, everything got the thing got the worst past the other one, the, the as the team did before. They bet this government, made they release money for us. As the team be now, everybody and we know never do with passengers. And if budget does not go out, how do we get money? And all passengers are complaining of scarcity of money. There's no money. You carry person hundred naira, they will bleed it to transfer. To you, which is very bad. Our services also are not welcome. The scatter of money is still remain as it is. There's no difference. Rather, it even increase. You know, they you know they are all at all. Even they go come, they ask me for uh, I transfer because of 15 naira water, all this. I no get money to buy for more. Buy this one. People won't buy, but money no day to buy. So I don't even tie yourself. Well, not that the cash is available though, but when I got to bank this morning, even yesterday when I got to bank, they said there's no cash. So I have to leave there and come back to my business place to do transfers because the, that's the only thing we can do for now. Transfer, maybe someone wants to buy in a papier or a time. I would say the money is not yet in circulation because even this morning, I got to bank around 9 o'clock. They said there's they are yet they are not giving money yet and we just see bullion van just arrive at the bank and yes they are not still giving money even if when they are giving money they are giving only at the counter they appeal to the federal government to help address the situation at hand and help reduce the sufferings noel samson trust tv news abuja Thank you, Noel Sampson, for that report. With that, we move on to the international scene, where United Nations says flights have been suspended on specific routes in the eastern Congo region after a helicopter returning from Walikale to the regional capital Goma in North Kivu province came under attack for 10 minutes last week, but was able to land safely in Goma with all three crew and 10 passengers unharmed. The UN said the helicopter delivers assistance to some of Congo's most remote areas which would otherwise be inaccessible because of poor roads or insecurity. No group has claimed responsibility for the attack, but this is the second time this month that a UN missions helicopter came under fire in North Kivu province. 
Israeli authorities have released all suspects arrested after a Sunday night rampage by Jewish settlers in the occupied West Bank, which killed one Palestinian, injured hundreds and destroyed Palestinian homes and property. The Israeli police told the Times of Israel that six suspects had been released on Monday and that a further two were released to house arrest on Tuesday. No other settlers are believed to have been arrested. The Israeli government has come under fierce criticism for its response to the attacks across several villages near Nablus, in which some 400 settlers participated. Settlers committed shootings, arson attacks, and beat Palestinians with metal rods and rocks. 390 Palestinians were injured, the majority from tear gas and smoke inhalation. And finally, in sports, new Libya coach Hamdi Batal has said his most important task is trying to persuade a number of players out of international retirement as the Med Mediterranean Knights bid to qualify for a first Africa Cup of Nations since 2012. The 42-year-old has been appointed to succeed Frenchman and former Mauritanian coach Corentin Martins, who lost his job after a disappointing African Nations Championship campaign. Batal will work alongside assistants Moad Aboud and Dries El Mrabet, and has been chosen after the Libyan Football Federation expressed their preference to appoint a Libyan-born coaching team. And with this, we've come to the end of Trust News Hour. Don't forget to follow us across all our social media platforms. I'm Darshan Husseina Usman. Thanks for watching. Daily Trust News Center. This is the News Hour.